This is the Nowhere to Go But Up podcast. I'm your host, Sean Dustin, and today I'm talking to Andre Syke. And Close. And, yeah. What is it? Andre Syke. Oh, Andre Syke. All right. Sorry about that, brother. I'm That's horrible okay. with names. Uh, he was a pre-med student destined for medical school uh, and then just all of a sudden had a change of heart and decided to uh, follow a personal development journey instead wrote a couple books and uh here we are mm -hmm. how are you here we are i'm doing really well like thank you so much for having me on the show like i just just want to give you kudos to creating such an amazing expression i mean from episode one my friend you are oh my gosh you 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 got my you got hooks in me and every single time that i hear you speak it's I just can't I can't get enough. So thank you for having me here. Thank you for sharing your story, which is super inspirational and, and motivational, and that you're doing this to to you know to spread goodness around the world. Like this is such a valuable asset, and like thank you, truly thank you. Well, you're welcome. Whoa, wow. yes. Let me turn that one down. That went a little too high. Well, you're welcome. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that I have you know some people out there that are actually listening to what I'm doing and that it's not uh, going unnoticed. Um, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's it's really not for. I, I put like I said, I put it out there, and if somebody gets something out of it, cool. If I get to engage with them at some point, uh, and you mm -hmm. know, either through my uh, podcast group or you know, people reach out to you know whatever platform I'm on. Uh, it's mm -hmm. always nice to, to get feedback, uh, for anything that you do in life. Right. Mm -hmm. Agree. Completely agree. You know, that the feedback is what keeps us coming. It's what keeps us, uh, engaged in doing what we're doing. You know, that's why, you know, weight loss journeys tend to not work as well because the feedback is in the progress. And if you're not doing it right, you know, you're, you're not making progress and you just kind of give up because you're like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. right? I, I, I hear that hundred percent. Oh. I think that there's a similar thing with just like exercising too. Just, you know, you're trying to build muscle or you're just trying to get healthy. And if you have a doctor next to you and they're like, yeah, you're doing this right. You're feeling this right. But if you don't know what you're doing, you, you might just think you're going through the motions and not seeing anything, even though there is progress happening and it's easy. You have to just walk away. Cause what am I doing? Right? Yeah. Well, I, I, I could be doing this on the couch, right? Right. <laughs> that, well, but, but that's why it works. That's why those like, yo, mach you know, I'm sure you've seen like infomercials for like the butterfly and you put a little vibration thing on your stomach to get six pack abs. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. that sells. Cause people are like, Oh, this is the same thing. I'm just going to put this on, eat a bu bucket of chicken and watch TV and have this magical ab machine. Make, just make my <laughs> belly jiggle. You know, <laughs> what about the shake weight? Remember that? Uh, Oh, at least, okay. Well, at least that thing worked. That's okay. Do you try to shake weight? I mean, yeah, it looks like you're jerking the guy off, which is fine, <laughs> but like that was so much resistance. <laughs> yeah, it I think it doesn't that. matter if it looks like I'm jerking off a couple of guys, I'm getting results. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, man. So tell me a little bit about your books and, and, and your situation, your, uh, your journey and, uh, you know, how you got to be here. Uh, it was a great question, very deep, because I, I know all of us have uh, infinite choices that we made in order to become the person that we did. And to so, so I guess, yeah, let's start with the books. The books came out, I think the first one was uh, time, um, oh, 2016. It was very, uh, yeah, 2016. It was very uh, recent to after when I, okay, it was at, right after I changed uh, my I guess perspective and ended up on a different side of myself I guess I was a, a brand new individual and the, the book kind of came out of me and I'll get into that in a moment and then the second book uh, it was a poetry book that I just kind of you know woke up every day uh, I was already in the middle of feeling a whole bunch of things the, the uh, you could say the universe was kind of flowing through me and I was I was on a um, and an emotional journey at this point. This was a good year where I just I feel like I went on a feminine side and allowed things to just kind of wash over me. And, you know, I just felt them. And I try to capture those feelings, whatever they were, in a similar way to the first book, but in a poetic fashion that I used, um, you know, uh, visual cues, uh, alliteration, and just, you know, just, just language in order to paint a picture and to express like a deep emotion. So the first book was actually a philosophy book, philosophy slash poetry, but mainly philosophy about the mind, the mindset that I found through all of my, 
you know, mistakes that we make in, in our life, through the choices that we make up till you get to a point of introspection and then you say, holy shit, what? I lived that life. I made those decisions and that was the best that I, I could do. Obviously, you know, you can't judge yourself. You can't blame yourself for doing your best, even if it leads you to a unwanted circumstances. But that was the first point that I got to, um, I guess, reflecting onto myself, onto my life and say, whoa, like there's some good things here that got me to this point. There's some great lessons that I avoided during that event was happening. And then uh, basically I just kind of, I, I took those events, I took those understandings, I wrote them down and you know, if somebody gets use of them, th all the better for them. Right. Um, so to begin, I guess my, my little journey, uh, I want to start, I guess let's start in middle school. I'm not that old. I'm 28 years old, <laughs> but I, I know that middle school is very hard for a lot of people. I was a teacher for four years, right, recently. And they also tell me that middle school sucks. And I, and I felt it because they shat at me and I didn't deserve it. I just wanted to love them. Um, but middle school was, was, was tough. You know, we all go through changes, you know, puberty hits. And then I believe that's when we start to um, kind of leave our childhood behind that, you know, we want to play, we want to do things, we want to be friends. And we start to look outside to see, how, how, do I fit in? Am I, am I, do, am I doing this right? Uh, why, 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 am I, why, am I, why am I not like them? Why am I not like them? And you start to lose your individualism into in the, like in the crowd thing because you're trying to, you know, be one of your friends or whatnot. So as in, in middle school, I, you know, you, you go through that. It felt like, uh, I had a few friends who who could put me down and who were bullying me and picking on me because, you know, I came from Russia and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't normal or whatever. I'm a weird dude. So <laughs> I felt ostracized for a while and it just, it just, it just continued. I allowed that weight to build upon me and I allowed people to get to just pick on me further, to devalue me. And I believe them, which is the dangerous part, you know. I believed them and I allowed that to keep happening and you know, I kept shitting on myself. You know, your thoughts keep weighing down on you. Depression starts to happen. And uh, at that time, you know, just, I, I, I was suicidal. And that was, that was the heaviest, that was the heaviest that I've ever experienced in my own life because, you know, I, I didn't have, I felt like I didn't have control over what was going on. And then I grew up a little bit, you know, just like built on some muscle, you know, just like, I don't know, you know I, I think I was like five three, five two for for the longest time, and then boom, almost six foot. I was like, oh, I feel like I have value now. I feel like you can't do this to me now. And there was a moment where um, there's a there's an individual who he, he kept messing with me for a good, probably for for like a whole year, just throwing things at me, you know, like like little Cheetos, little tomatoes, just like just throwing shit at me. And you know, I'm I'm looking good. I'm trying to bolster up my 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 self-confidence by like wearing expensive clothes just to, so i could feel good not that it was working but you know it was what it was so i finally got to a point where i was like i don't deserve this so i stood up and just clocked him straight in the face and <laughs> he and then you know that was it he didn't want to do anything he, he finally he felt fear and he he didn't fight back he just kind of accepted it and for me that was a very interesting moment where i realized oh i don't have to take anybody's shit uh i can go around punching people in the face. <laughs> Not the lesson I should have learned, but you know, it got me where I needed to be. And then after that, I became a really, a, a really douchey ba a dude. Um, you know, <laughs> violence was the answer. And you know, um, I was, I was better than everybody. And it, 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 you know, the script kind of flipped. Now I was on the side that uh, would have been doing the, the, the damage and the picking on and, and the, and the, uh, the pain delivery, I guess. Which, you know, I, I, I think we all need to experience, the, you know, the duality of life, you know, being the victim, being the, the oppressor, so we can actually understand the situation for what it is. Um, so while that was going on, I loved video games because it was an escape. You know, you, you go into a universe and you get to express yourself or you get to just, you know, play a character. And as I, as I was doing that, my parents were saying, hey. Why are you wasting your time on these video games? Don't you don't you want to do something great with your life? And I was like, I don't know, I'm a freaking kid. So they <laughs> sold it to me. They said you are gonna, I, you you would be a great doctor. And I was like, I'm gonna be a great doctor. 
because you know how we get indoctrinated by the school and the parents, you know, here's an idea, go with it, because we know better for you. And you're like, yeah, I guess, I'm just a kid, I don't know anything. So I I, I was a good student, you know, I, I learned well, I, I, I had a lot of understandings about how just to, I guess, accumulate knowledge. Uh, I think because I sucked at interpersonal connections at that time and I couldn't connect, so I, I found something that I could understand, which, you know, the answer was always in the book. Just read it, focus on whatever it's saying, download it, and then, oh, cool, I understand biology, I understand math, you know, just, just keep getting new answers, keep putting yourself into a problem, solve it in, in whatever means you have, you know, here's an equation, here's an equation. So, like, knowledge came pretty easy to me, um, and I think that's how they sold me in the medical school. So, now I'm a douche. Uh, I like punching people. Uh, I feel like I'm better than people because I know a lot of things. Um, and first girlfriend comes along. Uh, so, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> she, what's the word? So, she was already married, and she had a boyfriend, and here's me sitting in the hot tub be like, hey, how you doing? Um, not proud of myself. That's where my journey took me. And she was ready to get a divorce and she ended up breaking up with, with the boyfriend to, to be with me. And oh boy, was that an interesting four years of our lives. You know, it was my first relationship. She was an interesting human. Obviously, she was married at 18 or she, she married at 16 and was, you know, trying to live her own life. So and, you did it. So you did a couple guys a, a favor, right? By taking her off of their hands. I honestly, probably, <laughs> probably. I mean, she was great, right? Well, I mean, the sex was awesome. She was pretty. You know, she she's crazy, and and I'm a douchebag. So match made in heaven. You know, the crazier uh, they are, the better the sex usually is. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Just an FYI uh, out there for anybody listening. If the sex is good and the chick is crazy, that's not by coincidence. I, it's it's true. I mean, the first time we, we got it on, like, you know, I'm, I'm this innocent boy that just likes punching people. <laughs> um, and, and she's just like, oh, OK. And she just starts biting me and scratching me and like choking me. And I was like, what is this normal? Like, <laughs> I don't know, uh, is this is this what people do? I was like, all right, you keep doing it. I'm not going to question you. You keep doing it. Um, so, so, so that was fun. You know, she did introduce me to a lot of, to, to a new side of something that, you know, I thought I knew a lot about, you know, which is a, a constant theme in my life where I, up until that point, I know a lot and I know better than you. And, you know, I'm this cocky asshole walking around. No wonder I got into fights. Um, so, so she was that first mirror that showed me, he's like, Hey, um, maybe you don't have to be cocky, but you can be confident but being cocky isn't really attractive. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's the same thing. Get the fuck out of here. And, you know, it, it kind of played itself out in, in, in ways that I would, you know, as, as any immature boy, you know, you, you found somebody, something you like, you want to put it in the cage. It's mine. I'm right. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to turn you into whatever I want. And I was very manipulative in that, in that case. It was, it was still, you know, the self-defense mechanism from, my early on in life but you know it was what it was and she was trying so hard to 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 show me who i was and and how i was treating her and the fact that you know maybe i wasn't being completely open about my desires you know always trying to oh jealousy right that was huge in my life at that point being jealous anytime she even looked at anybody any and, and talked to anybody you know was, was like danced I was like, stop dancing. You're, 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 you're a whore and you're, 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 you're trying to get attention from other boys, you know? So there's a lot of uh, just a walking bag of insecurities. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say, so it was really your, you projecting your own insecurities about yourself on, onto her. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. And that's why, like, a after we broke up and after I had some realizations, like, I messaged her again and or, or i talked to her again got together and said hey like i love you now more than i ever did because in the past you are only i mean i never saw you for who you were i only saw myself and what i wanted in in my mind and i just put it just this image and illusion upon your body you walked around as, as yourself and you're trying to show me who you were but i try to snuff that out at every possible moment i could you know she sang she danced she tried to show me the music she liked and every time I'm like what does this mean about you it means you're a whore and, you know, I made her feel bad about being an individual, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
which, which is so crazy because now like everything she was doing, I like I'm doing that. I'm going out and dancing like a crazy person. You know, I'm singing. I'm, I, I don't have a care in the world about what other people think. And that's what she was doing. And I hated it. So it's, it's weird how, um, I guess, again, we have to feel both sides of, of, of the coin to really understand the situation. And, and I think I have to retract what I, what I said is that you, you took her, you know, maybe you took her, her off of other people's hands, but actually she sounds like she, you know, aside from being crazy, actually was sh showing you some things about yourself. So maybe she, maybe, maybe she, you know, maybe, let me retract that. Cause I was thinking yeah. of it as uh, you know, maybe one of the women that I'd been with in, instead mm -hmm. of yours. So mm -hmm. sorry about that. Keep going. It's okay. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, of course. Like she, maybe she, she might've been conscious about it, but not who knows. Right. But we were, we were there in that relationship and she was facing her own problems. You know, she, she was sick. She had like, she had a uh, scoliosis and it really, it um, it expressed itself in, in like, um, chronic pain all the time so she had to self-medicate and that's when it was like yo pain pills came into play and then she graduated to heroin and th and then here's me you know like in medical well not medical school just you know, pre-med uh learning about all these things and just like being in in the situation i'm like i wish i could help you i can't help you um i want i want to, for you to live a better life than you were living and i wanted more for her than she wanted for herself so we just continue to have this 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 torsion between between ourselves that, that kept pushing her away she'd run away every like every other week she would run away she would hide and then she'd come back and i'm like oh i love you i'm sorry and i'm just like ah you bitch but i always took her back <laughs> um she'd come with like a hickey and and, we'll, and then she'd just make up some story and i'm just like ah, i know you cheated but it's like what am i gonna do and i just played along with with the the insecurities that we both had oh you little cheater you come here yeah, yeah it, it, uh, it was it was such an interesting time i swear the tangled but, webs we weave my friend indeed indeed and and so once that was set uh set aside and you know i kind of had a chance to kind of reflect on it years later um it, you know i finally understood you know the value that you provided for me I think one of the, one of the last days, I don't know how we broke up finally, but I remember one of the last times we actually saw each other in a relationship, you know, we came in and we had, we had our talk again, just laying in bed, just like, oh, so we can do this. Maybe we're going to do this. Oh, let's sleep on it. We go to sleep. I think it's like, I mean, maybe it was like April, like now or, or February. It was a normal, let's call it March. I think that that'll be fair enough. And we go to sleep at like six o'clock, wake up at like seven like three feet of snow out of nowhere out of nowhere and i wake up i was like this is this is weird this you feel are you, are you tripped out by this I'm like yeah we'll give a shit so i i feel like maybe that was a sign from the universe be like all right just i don't know clean this shit up you're like you're, you're making a mess just move forward just just stop this you've broken up like 600 times already just just leave each other alone um but so so that i guess that mentality that that i accumulated in, in school carried over to the, to, to the relationship about, you know, just again, my superiority, quote unquote, but my, my, my desire to manipulate and control the, the environment because I've lost control in my own life and I allowed other people to, to um, manipulate me in their ways, you know, again, picking on me, calling me names, all these things, creating narratives that never happened in order to just, I don't know, diminish me, diminish my uh, worth, self-worth. So I went to the, the other extreme. So like, all right, I don't need anybody. I am the greatest thing in the world. And I had no basis to, to, to claim that. So once I was done with that, with her, or once we were done with each other, I went, I went forward and, um, you know, continuing my education, finishing it up, was going to decide to be, was still on the track to be a doctor. And before that I had another lady come, come find me. I've had four girlfriends in my life. This lady came and found me or I found her, who knows? It, I, I actually told the story on the other Sean's podcast, getting to know you. It was a threesome story. Um, <laughs> hilarious. I think, I think we broke the internet with that one. Uh, but if anybody wants to hear that one, they should in, in, in greater detail. And, but so I found her and she taught me gratitude. She, she also had a boyfriend and here's, here's me. He's like, Oh, don't worry about that. You come, come hang out with Mr. Psyche. Yeah. You don't, 
I never steal anybody, but I just I just show up and I was like, let me just love you, and if you want to be with me, that's that's cool too. You know, I never I, n- I never tried to force their hand anyway. I just want so to pet show- you. I just want yeah. to pet you. That's it. That's all I want. You know, just let me just, love on you. Yeah. Well, what about yeah, him? Yeah. Him? Ah, who's he? Yeah. I don't need. He we don't need to worry about him. You. That that's exactly it. That's exactly. I'm glad. You know, I'm glad I didn't piss up anybody too crazy because you know, like now, you know, that's there's crazy people out there and I understand that, you know, but that's okay. You know, it's a, it's a learning, it's a learning curve all the way through, but I met her and then she started spending some time with me and she, she did this weird fucking thing. She kept thanking me for everything. I was like, what are you fucking weird? And she's like, thank you for bringing me tea. I was like, why are you thanking me? She's like, thank you for bringing me a blanket. What the hell is wrong with you? Shut up. And then she explained to me, he's like, oh, you know, it's called gratitude. I was like, gratitude? What is this stupid <laughs> thing? And, you know, it, it honestly was, it was almost repulsive for, for like the first couple of weeks. I was like, I don't understand what is happening here. Like, I, I never got used, I never experienced that ever in my life. You know, it's always felt like, you know, me versus the, the world. Even with the first girlfriend, it felt like I was battling her rather than, you know, there was a team situation happening. So she, like, she she showed me first of all that I'm not always right. She she a lot she told she told me like go research some shit about whatever things. I, I think <laughs> I think we had a I think we had a disagreement about cannabis, right? And at that time I I, I used cannabis in high school, and then I I put a negative um uh, negative lens about weed because it got me into weird situations uh, with with people that I didn't respect or or that didn't respect me, and so I put a negative. Uh, lens on on cannabis and i was like yeah this is for drug addicts and for stupid people and for assholes and just whatever again just to just to rationalize things the mind is an untrustworthy thing because it can rationalize everything (laughs) but she's like hey dude i do it and it makes me feel better it makes me feel closer to god or whatever she says and it's it's there's a bunch of health benefits and you know it's scientifically proven like you sitting here you're you're all this smart guy but you don't even know the science behind it so i was like ugh, fine you know, with, with this almost angst in my heart, it's like, I'll prove you. And, you know, she proved me wrong because I found everything I needed to see. Or the, the science backed up, the, the the health studies backed up. And I was like, oh, maybe you're right. Maybe it was my own, I don't know, again, my own reflection, my own perspective that just needed to change. And once it did, you know, I, I kind of felt maybe just I could breathe a little more. You know, I, I, I wasn't this all-knowing person. There was room for growth. There was always room for growth. And then she taught me just gratitude. And then I started mirroring that with her. And I was like, oh, gratitude is nice. Like beforehand, I, my friend lived next next door to me. And I thought he owed me the, his time. I was like, you're my best friend. Hang out with me. What the fuck is wrong with you? And now I was like, oh, gratitude. I can I can be grateful for even seeing him for, for one moment, for like 10 seconds out of, out of his day. Because, you know, he's got his own life. He's got his own priorities. I'm not the center of his attention. I'm not the center of his life. I'm just, you know, just because we're friends doesn't mean we owe any, each other anything. So I was like, oh my gosh, like there's, there's, this, there's this freedom that exists that I don't have to manipulate or, or, or even extort or just emotionally abuse people in that sense. I could just see how things work out and, and just be grateful that it worked out and then just move on. And, you know, I'm sure it will come. And if it doesn't, I had that moment and I can be thankful for it. And again, I could, it's like, I could almost breathe more. <laughs> So that was the moment where I was like, all right, I worked with a doctor for about a year. I finished my undergraduate and uh, I thought this is, I, I was having qualms about going to become a doctor. I was like, do I really want to do this? Is this my choice? Did I even, did I think this through? But I came to a point saying, you know what, who am I to turn down this one opportunity to be, to, to become a doctor? The, the dude that I was working for, for, for the whole year, he saw a great potential in me. And, and within two weeks of me working for him, he says, Andre, you, ha- you, you're smart, you're talented, you're, you're capable, like you're hardworking. You, you tell me when I will call my people at some, whatever med school he went to in New York and I'll get you in. Like, you don't even have to worry about nothing. I was like, oh, okay, cool. You just doc, but <laughs> let me think about this. <clears throat> So I took a year to think about it, and I got to a point where I was like, yeah, who am I to deny this? This is amazing. I'm going to do this. So I said goodbye to my friend. I said goodbye to all my friends. And I was driving to my parents' house to tell them, I was like, hey, I think I'm going to finally do this. And this was like a seven-minute drive that I, I, was, I was just kind of, you know, just driving in silence. 
And I almost had this epiphany that just kind of hit me. It was like, that, that allowed me to fast forward life and say, okay, I'll go to med school 12 years later. You know, I'm a doctor. I can come back and do whatever I want, start my own practice if I wanted to. Uh, and at that time, you know, my little sister, who was, I think, five or six at the time, you know, she's 18. My mom's in her 60s. My dad's in his 60s, 70s. My brother is, you know, in his 40s. Like, I've missed the entirety of, of, of their lives. The people who I claim to care for so much, the people who I love so much, I missed the entirety of their lives. And I missed the opportunity to be an influence in their lives, the way, how they change, you know, if I can help them or not. And in that moment, the biggest thing that really changed my mind was, was my sister. I would have missed her middle school years where I felt the greatest amount of torture and pain and her dad passed away right around that time too. So I knew she wouldn't have a role model to, to look up to or to ask for, for guidance. And I thought like, if I leave, what, what, who's to say that she's not going to go through the same hell I did? You know, and I don't, I don't want anybody to go through that. Like that, that's why I, I was teaching too. You know, in middle school and high school, I wanted to make sure that they were felt and seen and understood. That yeah, shit's shit's hard, but you know, just just ride it out. You'll be fine. Uh, so, <laughs> seven minutes later, right, this little drive, after saying goodbye to everybody, I come up to my parents or to my mom, and I was like, hey, I'm I'm gonna quit my job. I'm gonna leave my apartment and I'm come help you with your business because I love you guys more than I wanted, you know, pride or money or whatever it was about the doctor thing. And kind of slowly just kind of transitioned into into you know, just just whatever it was. I kind of left any, anything I had behind, any sort of backup plan, anything and everything, and I said, Okay, whatever this is, I'm gonna follow this. I wanna be with my family and I wanna be in um present with them. So I started working for her for a company, which was a custom manufacturing business. And there's the first time in my life that I actually like made something with my hands, you know, used some sort of knowledge that I had to actually create something rather than being some etheric badge that I wore to, to make myself feel better than other people. Oh, you look at you with your car. I, I know biology. I know chemistry. I'm better than you. You know, that, that, was, that was my thought process for a long time. So that's the first moment that I took this knowledge and I was like, oh, I can I can learn how to program something on the computer, have it talk to like a CNC router and like cut something out. That's cool. That's like an extension of my body. What am I, a robot? <laughs> and then I started creating things and I had this moment uh, just of, of clarity, maybe like a month or two into it where I started uh, to really focus on, on, on you know, on the, on the body. It was kind of starting applying the, the lessons I learned from biology, like how the mind works, how the brain works, how the body works, how, what kind of food I intake, because my choices, dietary choices were horrible, even though I was a med student, <laughs> right? And I got to a point where, you know, I started eating cleaner. I started thinking clearer. I started expressing myself a little better. And I just had this lightning start about, and, and, and I understood us. I, I was the creator of my universe. I was, I was God in a sense, not the God. I don't need anybody calling me hubris, but I was God of my own life. I can manipulate, um, think, I guess maybe not manipulate is the right word, but I could Shape. envision something for myself and then, carry it out you know and now for me that was what the like tra the, the trade the you know this, um, the cnc router kind of taught me so from that moment i thought okay if i am the creator of my universe what do i like what do i do with this how do i how do i use this and if you see my shirt um just start throwing paint it was like all right i'm just gonna th start throwing paint at things and just see what happens and that's where it kind of all began my, my kind of self-transformation to the, of, of just that understanding of I can, I can go out and I can shape the universe in ways that uh, will express itself through my current emotional state of being. Um, I, get, I guess it goes a little deeper than that. Uh, what, what I wanted to prove to myself was that if I am the creator of my universe and, you know, going back to like, you know, quantum mechanics, just the understanding of, of particle duality, how something can be a wave or a, or, a, or, a, or a particle. Um, and the, 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 the job of the observer, which is us, you and I, the, the consciousness, if they're observing how something is, is occurring, it, it changed shapes. And if you're not observing, it's, it's, 
it's in its infinite form. Like, so it's a, a wave collapses into a singularity if, if, an, if, if a conscious being is, is observing it. So for me, what it meant is like, all right, so if I am, if I am uh, creating, if I'm creating something with an intention and I'm not, I'm not having, I'm not trying to manipulate it or control it in a conscious way. I'm not trying to, you know, like physically draw a horse. If I'm not trying to physically draw a horse and I'm just kind of in this flow of creation and using, you know, physics and the universe to just kind of, you know, express itself the, the way it wants to through me, then I'm going to start to see something, you know, interesting. Something, something will show to me that I will, that there's a connection happening that I, I am in fact creating just the, the way the physical universe exists. And that's why I just, I'll let just throw paint at the wall or at canvases. So I started throwing paint and excuse me, I got to a point where, you know, I have a painting and I'm looking at it and I was like, all right, there's something here. I don't know what it is. And I started taking um, macro shots. I got a little camera, started zooming in and just looking at, points of interest on this on these paintings and everything they all had something so i, I zoom out or put, put it up put it on the computer and just kind of inspect it uh like um almost maybe like like the uh, what's, what's his name freud freud and his ink blot tests i know there's a fancier name but <laughs> people know what we're talking about um and just kind of started to look at my own mind what am i perceiving in this image what am i seeing my like present itself for me and very slowly or I don't know, maybe very fast who knows again lost concept of time uh it it started almost speaking to me you know these obviously they're either coming from my head from my own thoughts but i'd look at something and there'd be an attachment of some sort and they would start reflecting my own life maybe i use it for again just introspection and it was like holy crap there's this image of a, of a face and that face reminded me of this occurrence. And then I'd go down the, almost like a rabbit hole about this occurrence in my life. And I extracted, you know, like, Oh snap, love your neighbor kind of thing. You know, it's just like, just appreciate the, 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 the things that you have. Um, like what love was, how, how to be successful. Like that, that was my, that was my first book. I, I just translated these, these like, I think 32 images and each image just kind of, pulled something out of me and I just wrote it down and it was, it, it ended up being just a, my personal philosophy book of how I got to this kind of thinking, how like health, uh, the, 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 sh the way that the world is functioning right now, the way that I mean, maybe even governments or whatnot, and like why everything is structured the way it is. If you want to be successful, what kind of individual does it take to, to be successful? What kind of mindset does that take? Um, there's a, there's a chapter on love, like what, what love really is actually, um, like how to, how to be in a successful relationship, like what two individuals would, would need to think like, or be like in order to create something that's, um, maybe long lasting or at least, uh, valuable to, to each individual in their own growth, uh, journey. Right. And I don't remember other things. There's a bunch of things that just came out and I was like, Whoa, this is cool. So publish it, obviously, self-publish it. Very easy to do, by the way. Uh, if, if, if you ever want to do a book, let me know. Like, through Amazon is the easiest thing to do it with. Um, if you need help, like, literally call me. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Not that you probably need it. You're a smart man. Well, my, my, my problem is, is the, the motivation in actually getting it done. Uh, ah. that, that's, that's, where, that's where my problem is. Mm. I want somebody okay. to do it for me. That, that, I mean, okay. really, that's what, that's what it comes down to. It's, I, I just, you know, I'm like, fuck, can I, can I have that robot, you know, following me around and all I got to do is just tell my story and you put it all together. I mean, there's ghostwriters out there, but like, I'm super lazy to where it's like, all right, well, I need more than a ghostwriter. I need a ghost ride a wrong, ride a long rider. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but like uh, Gary V, that's what he does. A few other like entrepreneurial people who are number one, like bestsellers. That's what they do. They can dock. I know you can talk. They they just talk into a, a recorder. The you know they get a transcribed. They send that to a to an editor. They kind of you know format it better, and then they publish it. So like that way, you save your time. You can talk about a subject for you know whatever you know. Let me let's talk about whatever your book's about. Right? Boom. Copy. 
it's written down uh, rev.com. Um, they, they transcribe for like $2 a minute, I think. I did it once with an episode and didn't do anything with it. But, you know, it's <laughs> the, the technology's there and the people are there and it's fairly affordable. Yeah. Uh, and it's, but yeah, I mean, we can talk about that later if you want. So, yeah, the yeah, first book came out um, and third girlfriend came around. Whew, beautiful individual. I love her so much. Women are magical creatures. I don't know if people are, are paying attention, but they're some of the most incredible individuals on this planet. Even if even if they're bitchy, even if they're crazy, whatever, they have such potential for to, to show a man just where he is, who he is, how he is. You know, if you're paying attention, if you're there, like that that friction between two individuals, just or a romantic interest. I'm sure it works fine if, if you're if you're gay and or, or lesbian or anything like that, or anything in between. There's a lot of options nowadays. I'm sure it works <laughs> if you allow somebody you know close to you in that way. But a woman can show you your own soul, and if you're strong enough to take it, dude, like the the possibilities are endless. Um, but if not, you know. We'll just continue doing the same thing until we get it, which is fine too. You know, pain is pain, suffering is suffering until you say, "Hey, I don't want to suffer anymore. Let's move on to something better." It's so, a lot like addiction. Addiction's the same way. It's all. It's like a toothache. You know, you 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 deal with it and deal with it until you can't deal with it anymore, and then you go and, and have something done about it. You know, people people attitudes, uh, uh, perceptions. It's all the same. You know, mm-hmm. it all it, it all kind of works the same way. I completely agree. And it's funny you say toothache. I just pulled huh. one of mine out. Because, yeah, it was, it was like, it was stupid for like three years. And it was there and I was treating it. And I think there's like an abscess. The nerve started dying. And so I couldn't feel pain. But you have to clean it out all the time. And I thought, why am I dealing with this? <sighs> well, like three years of so much wasted time. I just went to the doctors like, pull it out. Like, you sure you don't want a fake one? Just pull it out, man. <laughs> and again, it's like, that all, all of that suffering that led up to it, I could have just decided to pull it out three years ago. But you need it. Sometimes we need that pain and that suffering of just whatever it was to, to give us the lesson to understand, hey, I don't need this. It's much easier if I just do it, I don't know, the right way the first time. But, you know, we don't always have the clarity or the opportunity until we suffer, which is why I am a firm believer to not take suffering away from people because suffering is... <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's how we grow. It's how we learn. I, I, will, I will try my best to walk people through, I don't know, the, the better, not, I don't want to say better, the, the, the road of least resistance. I'm, I'm happy to explain that to people. But if people choose to go down their own route where, where there will be suffering, and I know this, I, I've learned that I have no power over that. Again, first girlfriend, she went down the, the road of heroin and, 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 and all that stuff. And I try to save her and I only cause myself suffering. So now I just hold people in, the, in a space of love, appreciation, say, hey, I see what you're doing. That's okay. You know, if you need to experience this, you need to experience this in order for your own personal growth. Um, I'm here for you. I, I, I love you. And if you ever come, you know, if you ever need me for, for guidance or support or anything like that, like I'm here and it's not, it's 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 just a good way to maintain your own individuality, give other people the freedom to be their own individuals, to make their own choices, and just and I don't know, just still be in, a, in an envelope of love, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so there 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 are a lot of different levels to change. You know, uh, you, you know, you may be at a beginning level where you decide where you know you. Yeah, you know, I need to change something about myself. You know, I don't like something. You notice something about you that you're not happy with, you're not comfortable with, you're doing things, you know, that you're that don't serve you in any way or anybody else mm-hmm. in that matter as well. And so that's your first that's your first, you know, acceptance, accepting the fact that hey, you know, I'm mm-hmm. not perfect. Uh I I've got some growing to do. Um and in, and in being in the space where you're able to even receive uh anything from anybody you know because it's it's mm-hmm. one people all the time are, are are giving you inclinations and clues about things but if we're not ready to receive it or not even open to receiving it it's just a lot of times it's just pew, pew, pew. Mm-hmm. it's just you you just you're not you're not available for that and once you become available for that and you know life starts to change for people 
you know, mm -hmm. uh, when you, when you open yourself up to, Hey, you know, I'm not perfect. Uh, I've got flaws. I've got things that I do that I don't like. Uh, I've got ways that I treat people that aren't okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, once, once you get into that space of realizing that, like you said, you're not the smartest guy in the world. You know, there's other things to life than just being smart. There's a mm -hmm. lot of nuance to life that, that intelligence doesn't, doesn't cover, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, I've, I've known some, some pretty, some pretty smart, dumb people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seriously. You know, and, and it's like, and I've said it to him before. I said, dude, you're the smartest dumb motherfucker I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that sometimes you can be so intelligent that you have no common sense whatsoever. Uh, mm -hmm. there's your, your life is not linear or, or maybe it is linear. One of the two, it's like, you mm -hmm. see things only in one way. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't see the nuance to things, the emotional intelligence that it takes to, to be a person that is, you know, uh, whatever it is I'm trying to say, I'm sure mm -hmm. you understand. I understand. And I, I think that's exactly it. Like we are being taught and it's very, um, it's very focused in our education system from, from just public school, public, uh, private school and university. To, to focus on the emotion, uh, intelligent quotient, right? The IQ, the, 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 the masculine side of the brain, right? Rather than kind of combining both the emo emotional intelligence and intel intelligent intelligence. I'm smart right now. <laughs> Common sense <laughs> but, intelligence. Yes. And, and it's, it, it's, it's that biggest thing. And it's like you said, you know, some smartest dumb people like right now I'm in a place where, you know what? I would rather have a world full of dumb people who are kind hearted and emotionally intelligent and just want the best for, for their, for, for their friends, for, for the family, for strangers, even than a whole bunch of smart people running around saying I can make the, the, the iPhone 73.4 and then just like shit on people and steal their money. And, you know, kind of waste the resources of this planet that we all live in just for, for what to, to brag that we're cooler or, or more interesting or, whatever it may be, you know, there always needs to be a balance. And f for me, I think that was the biggest thing that I was trying to learn throughout this entire process was like, how do I balance this? You know, what is balance? And it, it since I spent so much time on the masculine side, you know, I walked around again, just getting into fights, um, abusing, having sex, all these things that society tells you you need to do, you know, uh, it, and kind of just shutting down my feminine side, you know, I, I thought dancing was like almost a sin, you know, don't dance. People will look down on you singing, expressing yourself, like everything that I am now, I once thought that it was a waste of time. It had no value for me or for society, for anybody else. And it was, I mean, it was worthless. And now, I mean, some, something to be afraid of even now. Did you, so, I mean, obviously now you've, you're, you dance and you sing and you, you do all these things, but were you doing that before, but just not in front of people? That is a good question. I, I, I can remember, um, and, you know, like again, that, that time frame. I, I remember myself just like dancing. I, I remember one moment of dancing. I was dancing in front of a mirror, just kind of moving, you know, just, just moving to, to music. And I was like, Oh, this is interesting. And then I heard some, some, something creak behind me. Like somebody was walking in or something. I was like, Oh no. And I ran away and I hide. And honestly, I don't remember any other time where I expressed that. So I do believe that there was an inkling of that inside of me and I was repressing it for whatever reasons, maybe being judged, maybe just afraid of, of showing my true colors. But even at that time, I didn't, I, I, I wouldn't have been conscious enough to even understand what was going on. So it was definitely there. And then I packed it up with so much weight and, and anger and, and almost disgust that it disappeared for a long time. That when it did finally come out, which was um, this third girlfriend, she like, you know, I started chatting with her, talking to her. She kind of came, came to me out of nowhere, um, literally at the point of my transition from being this douchey guy to, to more, you know, free flowing, more accepting, um, more spontaneous, just, just kind of taking the things as they are just like, all right, it is what it is, whatever it may be. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to just observe it. And then she came to me like that week and I was trying to explain to her, I was like, you know, like who you are, who she was, you know, again, just almost like a hippie person, you know, and, and 
she matched me at that moment. But I was looking at her and I was saying, my gosh, if I would have met you one week ago, literally seven days ago, I would have been repulsed by you. I would have thought you were freaking stupid. I would have, I would have not even gotten close to you. But I'm a brand new person and I'm super attracted to who you are. Like, this is what I want. This is what I love. This is what I am now. But I remember it clear as day, this other dude that was right there, right there. So it was a very interesting position to be in. Um, and when I spoke to her, when I talked to her, I messaged her all these things. She, after, after some time, she, she told me, she's like, you know, Andre, you're, you're a poet. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean I'm a poet? Like, what, are you, what are you trying to say here? She's like, dude, just, just, just look at the way you talk to me. Look at the things that you say to me. Look at your messages. Like, like you're poetic. Like, they, like there's, there's beautiful imagery. Like there's so much emotion in it. Like it's gorgeous. I, no one's talked to me this way before. And that was the first moment I kind of opened my eyes. Like, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I am a poet. And she, it, it was almost as if she gave me the permission to, to just follow this line of thinking, line of reasoning, line of speaking even. And since that day, I just, all right, let's, let's start writing stuff down. Let's, let's start putting things down. I'm a poet. I can do these things now. Oh my gosh. You know, <laughs> It, it's always seems like, you know, we, we still kind of look for uh, maybe approval from the outside world or even just a, a, a possibility of something existing before we can identify it within ourselves so we can track it down, pin it down and, and use it in any sort of way. You know, it felt like I was, it was invisible in my life, or completely invisible. Hmm. <laughs> um, and let's see. So number three, she number three. taught you how to. So I'm getting I'm, 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 I'm seeing a pattern here. Uh-huh. that you learn a lot through through your your uh your uh your relationships with females I, it felt like that was the only way i could at that time so and, was and there it, was there was there mommy issues um maybe daddy issues I don't know. no just 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 checking yeah d definitely like abandonment issues uh I, I felt like i had that growing up uh when we moved here from from russia to america in 2002 uh, dad left. He couldn't handle it. He was kind of just dragging the family down. So he left and it was uh, me, my brother, my mom, and she was working like three jobs. So I definitely felt like abandonment issues, mommy issues, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, just that, that, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I, I'm starting to see how, why, why you, why, why you like my podcast so much, because there's a lot, there's a lot of parallels, uh, between yeah. your, your world and my world. Like, do you, you're like, 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 I'm so happy you shared your first episode because yeah, it was, it was so rich in your storytelling and, and your and your and your patterns that you that you displayed down. It, uh, yeah, I heard it. And I was like, my gosh! I, I try to listen to it and do something else, and I thought I was cheating you. So I was like, I'm gonna finish this, and I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna listen to this specifically. And I just sat there and I just ingested it, and I was like, damn, this right. is good. Okay, um, this is about you though. So let's get yeah, back to yeah, you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, you and I will talk later about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, so yeah. So third girlfriend, her and I are stuck in this place of freedom almost. Like one of the first things I told her was, was like I, I have been the 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 manipulator in my past relationships. I have been the one to to try to you know bog you down and to lock you in a cage. You know, I don't want to do that to you. I want to offer you the freedom. Like I want you to be here because you want to choose me. I want you to be here because you, you find value in our, in, in our interaction and in, in the love that we share with each other. I want you to, to, to feel like if you wanted to leave tomorrow, you can tell me, you can say, Hey, I don't think it's working out. I have other ideas about where I want to go, where I want to be. And I want you to feel safe telling me that because I'm not going to try to stop you. I'm not going to try to convince you. Otherwise I feel like, you know what you want and I want to help you become your best self. So that was like, for me, again, oh, I felt like a level up there. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like my wings are starting to spread or something. Because um, I, I, I even told her, I was like, you want the sky? You fucking got the sky. It's yours. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, we had maybe like a good six months of, of, of our life um, in, this, in this just, we're just floating together. It, there, was, there was no, there, it, it was, I don't even know how to, tell, how, to, how to explain it. It was just there. We were being together. We had our fun. We went out. There was no, there was no structure. We were just one and, and it was gorgeous. And with her, oh, oh, with her. Um, one of the last times we, we were together, we, we, sexually, we, we were having sex. Uh, I, I had this epiphany, like, to, to what sex was, you know, just this merging of, of two souls into one. I was, I was going down on her, and I'm telling you, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a freaking, like, 
Gaia, the, you know, the, the Mother Earth, just like just sitting there, just like birds are tweeting, and there, there's just, just these mountains, and there's like this this very very scenic imagery, just like inviting me into its in, into its into its I don't know presence, and I was like, what is happening here? Came out, I was like, this, that was epic, <laughs> and and just like so with her, like even sex, just a, a new level. It wasn't something physical. It wasn't something like for an achievement. There's this just emotional connection there's this this just tangling of souls that happened that i, I that i mean it, it left its mark with me so much so that after her i was like all right i'm done dating i know what i i know what i want i know what i'm worth i know the individual i want to spend my my time with and i, I just want celibate after that um I, ended, I decided to take the the skills and the ideas and the talents that she uh, revealed to me that i had and just you know double down on them so that's why yeah, I started painting. I wrote my first book. I started to, you know, just kind of went out and tried to develop my mom's business while developing myself, making connections, just, just like being active in the world and trying to share this understanding that I have, this love that I've come to understand to just be like, hey, have you heard about this love thing? It's, uh, it's fucking awesome. I've never, I, I just came across it. It's, it's, it's delicious. Have you, th- have you seen this before? So I just started just like sharing it with people and not everybody was receptive, but there's a lot of people who just, I mean, who gravitated toward me and they found value and they, they, I mean, they looked at me like I was crazy in a good way. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And, um, I, sometime doing that, expanding myself and, and creating whatever else I was creating, uh, the last lady came around. And I was, I was teaching, I was helping an individual teach a welding class. Uh, I, I support a uh, trade school with my entire being. I think people should learn how to freaking build something, weld something, work on a car. I think everybody should be able to, you know, just be a sovereign individual and get shit done if they need shit done. And I think trade schools are important to do that. Um, so I was helping this, one of my friends, he was a, he was a welding teacher at a community college. He's like, come on, Andre, you, you'll make some things. You'll help me teach the kids, blah, 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 blah. I was like, all right, cool. So, so we were making stuff. And uh, we're in one room, and there's another room where more students are. And I'm looking out the window. And sparks are flying because there's a beautiful woman just standing there. It's like, ooh, ah, uh, mm, I haven't felt this way in, I mean, probably like two or three years now. Uh, you know, and a beautiful woman came across, and nothing, nothing stuck. Like there was no interest in there. I'd be like, "You're beautiful. You're a piece of art. I love you," but nothing touched my heart. I guess nothing, no, nothing strummed my my heartstrings. And then there's this individual. I was like, "Whoa, what is different about this one?" So I went and talked to her, and we ended up, uh, I don't know, maybe like going on a date or something, and in, in the following day or, or two or whatnot. And it was it was beautiful. And again, I wanted to offer her like just pure unadulterated love. I was like, "Listen, I have this thing." I want to give this to you. And she's like, oh, th- that would be really nice because my past relationship, they just wanted me for sex and I don't want to do that. Like, I just like, I want to connect. And I was like, you got it, girl. I'll give it to you. And uh, honestly, I think that was my, um, this relationship only lasted like two weeks because it was the first time that um, we got together and I, I think I put too much pressure on myself or I don't know what happened, but I felt like I betrayed myself at the end. Because, again, she didn't want sex. She didn't want anything physical. I like physical stuff, even though I was celibate. And I kind of, I felt like I manipulated her into just, into at least, uh, you know, going down on her and, and enjoying my time and giving her pleasure, you know. And she enjoyed herself. And then I kind of got out of it. And I, I thought to myself, what, what did I just do? What did I, what, what did I, like, how did this happen? Like, I wanted to focus more on, like, the emotional aspect of this, of this relationship. And here's me kind of going back on everything I stand for. I stood for it for the last few years. And I got into my mind. I said, you know what? I feel like I'm going to hurt you. So I, I, I have to let you go. But before that, she inspired me to just, to just quit talking, you know. She inspired me to, to start taking action. At this time, this was the first season of my podcast. And I just, you know, got people on there. It's like, blah, 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 talking about a whole bunch of stuff. And, and just trying to share that. But with her and her family, you know, they're all also artists. They were doers. They were creators. And they were always making something. And when she came by to, to make uh, some, some artwork with me, something struck or just something changed. I don't know, but she inspired me to say, all right, yeah, you're right. 
I sit here and just talk. I mean, you can see how much I talk. I can just sit here and talk for a millennia. But what do I have to talk about, right? What, what am I really saying? What do I have to show for all this talk that I'm doing? And that's when I was like, oh, it, it kind of kind of paralleled back to when I was a douchey dude and I thought I knew everything and I just had to just be there and just be cocky all about it. I found myself at a place where, yeah, I have this understanding and yeah, I have this love and yeah, I got to a place where, you know, like maybe I have some clarity about what is going on here, but what am I doing with it besides just talk? So I was like, whoa, again, just kind of something shifted inside of me. And I was like, all right, let's, let's make stuff happen. Let's go actually like do something in this world. Let's create something. Let's, 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 let's move mountains. And so unfortunately I had to let her go. But then since, since, after her, I, I picked up music because I found that if you want to deliver a message, uh, paintings is not the best way. Most people don't know how to look at a painting and extract the knowledge. Poetry, also not the best way because there's a lot of ambiguity that, that can be had there that maybe most people might not connect to. But music, um, or reading as well, but music... It, it happens in the background almost. It's everywhere. It's, 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 it's in our airwaves. It's in our kitchens. It's in our cars. And if you get your message, you know, packaged nicely with a nice little melody and it's digestible enough, people might not even be listening to it and you're getting in their mind and your same principle as marketers use, they're, they're, you're getting brainwashed. So if I'm going to brainwash you, let's, let's make, let's, let's, let's put some, <laughs> a, a beautiful message in there, right? Let's say, Hey, love each other, you know, appreciate each other for the, like, you know, look inside of yourself, find who you are and like, be that, you know, don't, don't look outside and try to try to conform to what other people want you to be. Find out who you are, find out what you love, find out what you want. And then start, just start, start following that direction. So I was like, all right, I'm going to make music. So I started making music and really just dove into that. And oh my gosh, music is magical. I love music. Guitar is my favorite. She changed my life, like truly. She she made me look at myself in a different way. And again, just allowed me the opportunity to go out and connect with a community of similar civil individuals. Up until this point, I felt like I was, again, you know, alone. It's like I stumble onto something great and nobody else knows about this. And I was like, what is what is going on? And to a point, it was true because I didn't see anybody. I didn't see this reflected anywhere. I didn't see anybody mimicking this. I just, I, I felt like I was all alone. And then with music, I stepped out of my comfort zone. I, I kind of started meeting people. I started seeing individuals who were similar in their mindsets. Like, yeah, we want better. We want change for the world. We want something better. We want people to feel loved and appreciated and taken care of and, you know, to express themselves. Like there, there's this life where people are living in fear and they're, they're, they're being bogged down by maybe even just like whatever, whatever. It can be anything and everything. And we're here to offer like solace and the catharsis and a way to just express that, to just relieve their pain to a point of, you know, maybe they can finally reach out and just kind of crawl out of whatever hole they find themselves in. And music f turned out to be that tool since that day. Oh, I just, I just been putting everything I could into, you know, into the guitar, just expression and reaching out. And um, yeah, out of that second poetry book came out and, whatever else happened like now i'm i don't know where i'm at anymore honestly i'm just kind of floating in, in a bunch of color if you can see <laughs> and just literally walking around like this everywhere i go and people think i am the visual expression of the coronavirus because i'm just like this jackson pollock clothed person with weird glasses and a hat and i don't know i just like i have no more uh what's it called um i don't know obstacles like anytime I go out into the world, I don't, like I don't, I don't seek for uh, approval from anybody anymore. Like that's what I took. Even I took learning into my own hands. You know, like life started to be my girlfriend, and she started teaching me about you know how to become a better person, how to look at yourself in a, in a, in a different way, how to introspect, um, in order to you know grow. Which again, for me, it's music, art, expression. I, I I could find myself my reflection in that. I could find my growth and and my intentions in my art, in my creations. So now, when I go outside, I I'll dance and I'll dance in, in in Safeway, you know, and I'll touch things. And people are like, "Why you gotta make a scene?" I was like, "I'm not making a scene. I'm just living life." <laughs> I went to a, I went to a biker bar, literally a biker bar, a bunch of people with beards and tattoos and bikes and whatever they are. 
And I just, just danced and frolicked around that place. I was singing, can you feel the love tonight into, into their faces? And I was caressing people and they loved it. And they came up to me afterwards. They're like, bro, I respect you so much. Like the thing you just didn't hear just now was amazing. <laughs> I danced for like four hours there and made like half the bar became my friend because, you know, I'm just there being myself, loving them, appreciating them. And, you know, we kind of had a little dance party. You know, it wasn't huge, but like 10 people started dancing here and there. So it's like I've, I've let go of anything that maybe society wants from me or s thinks they want from me and just started showing up as myself, started showing up as an individual who just wants to ease, I don't know, the atmosphere, who wants to just, just bring, just to see people for who they are and, and give them the opportunity to just to be heard, to be loved, to be appreciated. And you know what? Like, here i'm cool with that i don't know what what, what the next step is going to be but this is really nice i'm really i'm really enjoying this and uh you know i'd like to see where where this goes i think that's a whole story right there all right well you know what that is a story that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> um one thing i gotta say so you had the one the one uh, uh girlfriend that taught you about marijuana and how that was good did you ever did you ever finally partake in it uh, so I partook in, in cannabis, uh, again, in high school. I, I enjoyed it. It got me into trouble. Then when she came around, I was like, all right, let's do this. And then I started, uh, I smoked with her from time to time. And it gave me a completely different understanding of what it was. Um, so my understanding of what cannabis is now, uh, psychologically speaking, it is a, it, it, it shows you your insecurities, it shows you your deepest thoughts, right? And it shows you the projections that you make and maybe even the connection that, that is deeper than what we perceive. Um, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna say it sober. I'll say it that way. But I, I, I think uh, cannabis is a very dear friend and it, it, is a, it is a medicine that allows you to look at yourself from a, from a different perspective that, that allows you to you know, make a different decision. Like it shows you where you are and it says, okay, so this is where you are. You want to feel however you want to feel about it. That's why paranoia used to be a very um, common feeling for me in the beginning. Because I thought, oh my gosh, these people know about the things that I am. Which, if you're not comfortable with that, yeah, you're going to feel paranoid. If people know your deepest, darkest secrets. But once you understand that your deepest, darkest secrets are everybody's deepest, darkest secrets. That we're all feeling this, this shame sometimes, this negative, this depression. All these ideas that, that we live with that we are afraid to tackle. Once you understand that, you're like, oh. He understands me. He understands my pain. And then it becomes a reason to connect instead of a reason to, to, to fear. So the cannabis now, which uh, when I was a teacher for four years, I also put it down because the kids would always ask me, hey, Mr. Psyche, look at all your clothes. You must do drugs all the time. I was like, wrong. I don't do drugs at all. I don't even drink. I'm, I'm the straight edge, crazy person you'll ever meet. Like life is my drug. And uh, once I quit or once they fired me, I guess, uh, I was like, well, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with cannabis. It's, I guess, there's plenty of medicinal reasons to use it. And, you know, it gives me, uh, again, a platform for perspective from time to time. So I'll use it here and there. If I have a migraine, that's the only thing that will help me just not cry about it. I was like, all right, I'll take that. And, again, it just gives me a new perspective about where I am and where I could be, how I could be better. You know, I use it as a tool for growth. That's a it's a great tool. I uh, I I, I, can, I consume uh, on a regular basis. To me, it's I, like I take edibles, and I don't like smoking because I have you know there's uh, lung issues that run in my family, and so I, I quit smoking and I, so I don't mess with any of that stuff anymore. I don't like the smell of it when it's burnt. Even True. so, uh, but yeah, I mean for me, it's you know I take I microdose it, to, and it and it's more of like a um, like somebody would take uh zoloft or prozac you know it's mm -hmm. just it just it gives me a feeling of well-being i don't get i don't get high i don't get trashed it's mm -hmm. just uh it, it just puts me on a mellow uh trajectory and allows me to mm -hmm. just kind of go through life you know and, and examine mm -hmm. you know and and instead of being instead of seeing things from oh this is being done to me it allows me to flip it around and go, Oh, well, what am I doing to cause, what am I doing to invite this? 
Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's it's great for introspection for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely allows you to um, you know take a look at yourself and 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 how you uh, how you engage with your environment, not how the environment's engaging with you. Um, mm-hmm. okay. So I I enjoy it, uh, and I enjoy I enjoy uh, uh, mushrooms too. That's a more intense version of what you're explaining, mm-hmm. you know, because it that really sheds that really sheds your ego. Uh, and, and, and and like, if you're having an issue with something, I'm not a doctor. Let me just make that disclaimer right now. I'm not a doctor in any kind of way or, uh, uh, a a medical professional or psychologist. Um, I just know what works for me and, and, and my, my body and my mind and, and, uh, how I get through my own life. And yeah, uh, mushrooms. Definitely. I think that everybody should take a trip, at least a three and a half gram trip uh, once in your life, uh, to, if you're having some issues somewhere, man, it will definitely, it's helped me. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm getting ready at some point to take another one because there are still some points in my life with my attitude and how I see things and my laziness, uh, you know what I mean? That I, that I, I need Mm -hmm. to get under control. And so I'm going to go and and dive into my mind for a little while and uh, see if I can't come out with some solutions and some answers. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful, and and thank you for sharing that too. I, I'm a huge proponent of of um, uh, what's the word? Uh, psych psycho- uh, psych psych psychedelics. Yes, I am a huge proponent of psychedelics. Definitely, like I, I support maps. Um, any chance that I get, you know, the psychedelic research uh, to 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 use things like like. Um, mushrooms or ibogaine or uh, even ecstasy anything that that kind of disrupts that our, our thought pattern to kind of give us a brand new understanding of what is because yeah it, it's been shown and it's been proven that psychedelics have cured people of alcoholism of heroin addiction meth all of these things and it's like it's one of the greatest gifts one of the greatest gifts truly and honestly like i've i've, I've done it I, I try to do it every three four years to just kind of you know just see myself you know because we can find ourselves you know kind of wakefully or or sleep being awake and being asleep while we live our life and you sometimes you you can't distinguish between where you are you know that's just that's just the nature of being and i find that you know every so often or a few years just take that and just just inspect where have i been have i have i done anything that i haven't noticed that i've done and then just truly, again, own it, Re- take responsibility for things that are happening and say, oh, oh my gosh, I completely neglected this whole thing over here. I need to make sure that I don't neglect that. So you put that in your pocket and you're, you're, you're better for it, you're wiser for it because you're not allowing things to go unnoticed. So, and thank you for sharing that. that, that, that that's beautiful. Well, it, it's, a, it's a, a natural catalyst. It's a, it's a natural catalyst for change. Uh, and, and every, every civilization has dabbled in some, some form of psychoactive, uh, medicine, uh, depending on what region you are in the world. Uh, you know, like, let's say in, the, in, uh, like the people that have peyote, you know, readily available mm-hmm. in their area, they, they, you know, they did it. Marijuana, mm-hmm. they did it. Opium, they did it. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, just, it doesn't matter what it is. And if you know, a little bit about our history, uh, you know, and, and you talk about the medical, the medical people, every, every medicine that is, oh, from, from Western medicine, uh, from pharmaceuticals is derived from a plant anyways. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, a, they just throw their shit in there that, you know, either doesn't cure you or causes something else that they can make money on down the road a little bit later. Um, but what people don't know, and this is going to get off into a little bit somewhere else, but, but really what people don't understand is that like all these Ivy league schools, they were all built with drug money. Okay. From opium, the opium wars in, uh, with China, uh, you know, and this is getting way into our history, but yeah, a lot of these schools were built with, with drug money. Um, do it, it's legit. If you think, oh, you mm-hmm. son of a bitch, there you go with your, with your, <laughs> with your uh, conspiracies, you know, go, go Google that shit, you know, go, exactly. it, you know, it, it's real. Um, 
Yeah, but I mean, they they do serve a purpose, and there's a reason why mm-hmm. there's a reason why they've been outlawed and they're illegal, and and mm-hmm. you know they they because they they work. They do work. They they have they be, make you think for yourself. You know? Yeah. And again, I, I think I think I think we need to instill a sort of like you know growing up ritual like they do in so many cultures and i think ours should be hey here's here's four grams of 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 benzies go eat that and just kind of sit with yourself see what it see what you come up with see what happens you know kind of look yourself in the mirror and then and and you know decide what kind of person do you want to be you know because i remember one i remember one moment or or one trip I, i should say where it was very blatant that there was things coming down however they were coming down and I, w- I was seeing it all the injustice in the world, and I understood that you either accept whatever injustice comes to comes your way, or you get to one that you look at and you say, "I cannot allow this to exist." And you either have to do something about it, or you live in shame, knowing that it is existing there, and you're not, I don't know, man enough or just strong enough to go and tackle it. And if you're not, then you build yourself up in order to go and fight this battle or this injustice. And I, it was, it was, it, it's still something that resonates with me every single day. It's like. Yeah, there's stuff out in the world. If you can accept it, great. If you can change it, yeah, there's already a saying about it. If you accept what you can't change, change what you can't accept. Yeah. Which is deep. Yeah. Um, I, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, there's just, uh, I don't know. I think we're in a, we're in a funny space right now. Uh, mm-hmm. As society, uh, our situations. Um, <laughs> Uh, or we're all being forced to take a look at ourselves. And I don't know if that was the, the plan from the people that are running everything um, or, or moving everything. I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't, I know that the internet didn't, didn't, uh, they weren't, they weren't expecting that. And you know, the, mm-hmm. the amount of how quickly uh, information spreads and, you know, the, the news cycle now went from a week and a half to a week to instantaneous, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, uh, there's no, there's no hiding anymore. Anything. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it, it helps. Like, it helps us, you know, I don't know. Oh, uh, who like knows you're talking about history too. That's accessible now. Like all that information about history, how America was founded, how everything became the way it is now everything is written down and again you can take that with a grain of salt because you know who's writing it but then you just you just make sure that you educate yourself from every possible direction and say all right what am i getting out of all of this what do i think happened not what do they tell me because it's so easy to just to just listen to what somebody else tells you and i think that's one of the biggest problems is we we continue to look up to an authority figure to say to think for us but with all the knowledge available in the world take what you need collect it in a pool and say, all right, what is this telling me? Is this telling me that blah, 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 or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And make your own decision. And that's how you become a free individual, a sovereign being that can actually think for themselves and then make decisions that are best, in your opinion, the best for yourself and for the ones that you love. Absolutely. And we are at an hour and 12 right now. Goes by fast, huh? It goes by fast. It goes by fast. So, why don't you go ahead and uh, give all of your uh, spaces and places where people can find you, uh, plug anything you need. Uh, we're gonna, I'll have it in the show notes available as well, but uh, go ahead and uh, voice it if you like. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Uh, so first thing I just mentioned, um, MAPS, it's, it's, a, it's an organization that, that you can donate to. It's, it's a nonprofit organization that you can donate to, to, perce- to continue uh, the, the research with psychedelics and, you know, bring it to people that might use it in, in mental health uh, places and, you know, maybe even legalize it eventually. I know we are going in that direction, but MAPS is definitely an organization that I respect and I give to as much as possible. Um, if, for myself, if, you, if you're interested in either of those books that I mentioned earlier, uh, first one's called Expedition of the Psyche, um, Diamond Edition, because I republished it, because the first time the publishers I chose sucked, and then when I published it myself, it's great. So <laughs> do it yourself, guys. Uh, and then the other book is Space Between the Crescent Shadows. Uh, you can find a lot about me on just andrepsyche.com. Uh, it's the hub of my brain, my creativity, my music, my podcasts, my freelance skills, in my art, like literally everything is on there. And if you want to reach out to me personally, you can email me. My contact information is there. I welcome friends. I welcome guests. I welcome anybody who might think that they could 
um, need my help or want to just collaborate on something interesting, I, I welcome connectivity and unity. So please reach out if you feel like we would get along or make something awesome. And uh, yeah, stay lovely, people. I love you guys. <laughs> right on, brother. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, are you are you a part of my Facebook group, the podcast Facebook group? Uh, I don't know. No, if if I'm not, please do add. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll see. And if, if not, just uh, if you go to the show notes in any of my uh, recent podcast oh, okay. in, in my recent podcasts. Uh, uh -huh go to the link tree and then it'll take you the bottom of the link tree will be you know, my, my Facebook group. So all my places and, and, and spaces and places are on that link tree. It's really made it a lot easier for me to have to, I just shoot that out there. Like, all right, if you want to find me somewhere, okay. there it is. But Fantastic. Hey, I want to, yeah, dude, I want to thank you uh, for being a guest on the show, coming, talking to me, hanging out with me this afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to listen to you and all of the, all of the uh the parallels that you and i share so i mean we should definitely talk again maybe collaborate on some other stuff mm -hmm. for sure most most definitely and i will add you to one of my groups if you would like yeah I, that's I'm, fine. I'm collecting amazing humans into one place so we can make something interesting and i i would love for you to be a part of it yeah for sure just send me a send me an invite and i'll make sure i uh I accept it i will all um, right andre i appreciate you man I Thank you. I appreciate you, my friend. I love you. All right, brother.